It's another Saturday and today we are planting the orchard. You ready for me? What are you doing? You laying out more lines? Well, I thought I'd get started, but so make sure everything is even. So I started with our baseline. This will be the edge of our orchard. Oh, that will be the edge. Oh yeah. Because we measure off in right. here. And what we're doing is we're going seven feet from this edge to start the first row. Okay. And then each row after that is eight feet apart. So really the trees are all eight feet apart. Yeah. So we're just starting this first row at seven. So we thought that might give us some overhang with the trees, not yeah. necessarily with our walk path. <laughs> tie these knots mm -hmm. look how i do it so, so tight yeah so different than how i tie knots no no no. look you, you go under <laughs> you go under the first time okay and then you get that tight you can hold this string this side and get it get the knot up there all the way against it and then on this side of the knot you do that mm -hmm. it's, it's a slip and so if it gets tighter it just tightens against the fence yeah not all of us were eagle scouts so that's awesome for you <laughs> awesome for you because it's done right i don't know how to do it i've tried remember i was a bear scout leader and we had to do knots and seriously i was struggling so bad yeah those kids are kind of ruined for life i know i should have not been teaching knots i think it's better you just show me again uh -huh. since i struggle with knots there's no reason to get upset this morning already and feel inferior. You should be inside making us bacon. Oh my gosh, don't tempt me. Is that the most me. sexist statement I've ever said? Mm, don't tempt me. I really want to go inside and make bacon. But I'm also eager to see all of these lines get put out because they're looking so cool. I get so caught up in the middle Thinking of drowning in those blue eyes I'm losing sight because I am falling I'm so deep down, deep down. And it's not a lie that I die. I can't hide. What this is. Oh my gosh, you guys, this is like a crazy trip hazard. And we have rebar without caps on them. Super safe. OSHA would definitely approve. Like 10 more minutes because I'm gonna spray the, where the holes are, then I'm gonna remove everything. It'll be a lot easier to work with the Before tractor. somebody embeds themselves with rebar. I'm more concerned about it getting in my way with the tractor. <laughs> All right, so exciting news. We have finally measured and mapped out everything. So now Jason is going to spray. You're gonna use spray paint, right? At the cross sections of where our lines are, and we have it set up for 28 trees. So I'm very excited about that. There's some that we still don't have because the oranges haven't come in yet. So we will have like four spots for oranges because that's my favorite. And hopefully we can keep them alive. We're gonna use like Christmas lights and stuff to help keep them warm and get them established. Okay, so you're gonna spray and then you're gonna auger all the holes. Yes. Is that the plan? That's the plan. So I'm going to spray where the cross sections are. Yeah. I'll remove the flags first. Then we'll dig the holes. And then once the holes are dug, we can add in a little bit of the good soil and the plants. So um, after you make my bacon, uh -huh. then we can come out and decide where the plants go. Matter of fact, you can get right. the boys to help but you But you need them. to, no, you need to do the holes so first. I mean, I'll start doing that. Okay. Then you come back, you can start placing them beside the holes. Wow. You think you're going to dig holes fast. I'd be I, done if you weren't filming me right I was now. I'm going to question how fast you'll get holes done.
Coyote 3510 tractor, which I love, doesn't seem to have hydraulic down pressure on the three-point hitch, which means if I need to dig holes, it, it only uses gravity to lower the auger down. It doesn't have any momentum pushing it down. So when I hit hard clay areas in the dirt, it just won't dig, it just spins and spins. So I've had to resort to a Home Depot rental. This is a Toro Dingy auger. And it's slow, but it uh, seems to do a pretty good job. I've dug one hole. Now I'm gonna go through and dig all the rest. We rented that hand one from Home Depot because the one on the back of Jason's Coyote tractor, it doesn't have any hydraulic pressure and because our ground is so crazy hard, it wouldn't be able to go down. But looks like he's getting some holes done with this thing. I'm sorry you're frustrated. I brought you bacon. Thank you. Bacon makes everything better. What, dig holes? No, but you'll be, you'll enjoy digging holes more while you're eating bacon. It's true. I know, our ground is so hard. I don't know why you and my dad were like, oh, that won't take any time. I was like, what are you talking about? Well, if I had, if my tractor had hydraulics on the back, it mm -hmm. would push it down. Mm. This is just a typical piece of crap from Home Depot. Home Depot rental. Maybe next time you rent from U.S. Rents. I know, I should have. I should have got a bigger piece of equipment from U.S. Rent. I just wonder, do you think that these holes are wide enough for our trees to be able to grow? Well, the problem is my auger isn't as wide as I want it to be. Yeah. The ground, once you get through a, a quick layer, it's not bad under. You can see how deep I go. Mm -hmm. So I think the ground is pretty great for soil, but I think that some of the top of this is compacted so much from us driving tractors around mm -hmm. that the first few inches are just really compacted clay and mm. trying to get through that with these small augers just it's hard okay well how many holes do you have done one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen or so we're going to try to get one of our bigger uh skid steer tractors with an auger uh and see if we can get one today here brought to the house and uh, then we'll dig out the rest of these holes Brought the big boys in. Got our Bobcat T300 with a 24 inch auger bit. Yes, this is what I should have started with. Opening it for me. No, stop. Oh. Tanky was crazy in the backyard. He was like tearing open the boxes. Dad, am I still gonna drive it up? Sure. 
Yeah. Oh, so you got the bobcat over with the big auger. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and that made the hole so much bigger. So now our trees are going to be able to have oh, it's better. so much better. How big is that? Is that like a two? Three yeah, two it's foot. Thick. It's thick. It's a thick boy. So much better. Tank, I haven't seen. Tank loves the berry beds. He does. <laughs> I haven't seen Evan or Turner all day. Yeah, that was your dad. Wow. Yeah, this is incredible i could fit inside that hole they are perfect looking holes though it is exciting do we have enough dirt from the del dirt delivery last week to well we're going to reuse some of this oh, we'll use all this dirt and mix it with that mm. so yeah this soil is good so we want to mix it in with that mm. This is super exciting. Okay, so I have organized all of the fruit trees in order of when we harvest them. And so I'm gonna tell you everything that we have and um, the order in which they come on. So the earliest things I have are cherries. So this Bing cherry is going to be one of our early producers. Then we're gonna have this Royal Rainier cherry. Then we're gonna have this Utah Giant cherry, and then we have the Lapin cherry. So we've got four cherry varieties and they will pollinate each other. And you can see that they're early season, like this one says very early. So it's gonna be like May. So it's all gonna start in May. And then let's see, the Lapin is the end of May. So that will be exciting. Then we move on to the Apriums. So we have this flavor delight and it comes on in May also. So I'm going to have the cherries together and then these will be together as well, but they'll be coming on similarly to the cherries. Then we have an Arctic star white nectarine and this one is also going to be May and then into June. So have a lot of stuff in May and June. Then this guy, you guys, this was the last one they had. I was so lucky to get this cotton candy aprium. It looks yummy and it's going to be June. Okay, so then we have this sugar twist pluary, which seems really yummy. This is going to be mid June. It has like red skin, yellow flesh. So that's some kind of hybrid. Then we have a heavenly white nectarine and this will be June to July. Then we have this Satsuma plum. I'm super excited about this one, July to August. An Alberta peach. I'm not a peach person, but maybe I can be persuaded by growing my own. It'll be July. Then we have this Emerald Drop Pluot. I really like Pluots, so I'm excited about this like yellow one. And this is late, it's in August or late to mid season, I guess, so August. And then we've got our apples. So then we move into the apple area. We've got an empire apple. This one's coming on in August. Then what is this one? This is an apple pink pearl. So this one is also coming on around that time, I guess. Like, I don't even know if it said, did it even say? It says, I don't know, sometime around there. I stuck with the apples. Then we've got a Fuji apple, again, like August. Okay, I love Pippins for baking. So I was really excited that I got the last Pippin that they had. And this one is later, so very late actually. And then same with my Granny Smiths. They're gonna be late in the season, but those are my favorite for making pies. And then we have the Sierra Beauty apple, again, late. And then I have one pear, it's this Warren pear, and it's also late. And then we will have a pomegranate. The pomegranate's up at the house with the citrus. And then once it gets a little bit warmer, we'll plant the citrus at the end of the orchard because those will be like winter fruits. And um, we're gonna wrap them in Christmas lights to try to protect them. And we'll probably even do some kind of shade cloth or something to help protect them from the freezes. Here's our citrus up at the house and we'll get some oranges, but we have this grapefruit and, what is it? It's the star ruby grapefruit. We've got some, let's see, this is our, 
pomegranate. It's a wonderful pomegranate. Then we've got a lime, an improved Meyer lemon, and this is an increased Shasta gold, which I think is some kind of mandarin. You can see that it has one on it, but anyways, you can see the cold just from being out here has kind of hurt them. So we gotta get them in probably in the garage for now. All right, so we're back out here. We're gonna work on the orchard. We've got the boys out here and I laid out all my trees. So now we're gonna figure out which holes they're gonna go in. I think I have an idea on placement. So I'm gonna have them move the trees and then they're gonna start planting them. That's right, boys, you're the labor. Yep. yep. Okay, so Jason, my idea was originally I was gonna do them like, you can see how we have holes. Originally I was gonna do like types going like this way, you know? But then we have four cherries. So then I was thinking, because cherry blossoms are gonna be so pretty, I was thinking, what if these first four are cherries? And so then it's like blooming. And then we do um, the pluots and the nectarines back because I have four of each of those. So it's like this first 12 are cherries, then nectarines or pluots and then nectarines. Okay. And then we move on to the apples and the fall type of um, trees. Sure. Okay. So, boys, look, I need you guys to move these cherry trees. So, look at them. You see, this is my first cherry tree. So, who's going to carry this I one? Me. I said it. Okay, Miles is going to carry it. I don't think you can pick that up. So, they're going to go in order. So, Miles is going to bring that to the furthest hole. And then, you know, they go... Okay, so that's gonna be the Bing, which is the earliest. It's gonna go right here. No, just put it on the side of the hole because dad's gonna have to get dirt to put down in that hole. Okay, where's the next tree? Okay, so what I want to do, guys, is, Emmett, you read in the back of that how we install that fertilizer. Is it put into it? But look how I'm going to just quickly break it open a little. That's smart. So I want to stand over it. Oh, man. It's okay. Okay, listen, so start shoveling that dirt in there. Right, right now. No, 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 Stuart and Miles, that dirt. Turner, grab your shovels, guys. Wait, right now, should I start shoveling? Yes. Okay. Okay. Start pushing in. Okay, hold on a second. Stop for a second. Start pushing in this dirt here on the sides. All of you. Miles, go on this side. Yes. Okay, it's okay, Emmett. Yep. Okay, stop, stop, stop. Okay, hold the tree. That's good. Let's get some fertilizer here. Okay, now push the rest of the dirt in. This is why the rake would become really handy. Hmm? No, where's the rake? Oh, sorry, I thought I could just scrape it around. I have the rake. Turn and grab a rake. Okay, turn, do or do that. So we want to make sure this stays straight. Um, a little bit. So what I like to do is see the rake here. Watch, 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 Stuart. The rake is better because it has teeth. See how I'm just, I'm gonna make this whole area smooth so there's not big lumps to walk on. See how I'm just smoothing out all the, the dirt. See here how it's clumped up a little bit? Move. 
and then you mix in well, a little bit, but does that make sense? Okay, hold on. We're going to. Okay, come here. Help me out. Grab that. Okay, start pushing some of this. Carefully, Stuart. Hold, hold, hold. Stop, stop, stop. Let's make sure this looks. I'm gonna twist that. Okay, push more in. Okay, hold on. Let's see. Okay, now we show some of that. Bring the tractor up. Okay. You just get a little bit in there. No. Okay, now push the rest of it in. Okay. Now, Emmett, focus on the rake. Yes. Oh, yeah, Hold on, let me throw some more soil on top of there. No, I don't think we need to do that. I think we can just pull it out. <laughs> Hold on. Okay, start pushing it in there. Hold on, slowly, slowly. Okay, hold, hold the tree now, Turner, Stuart. Just hold the tree, just hold the tree. There. Just grab some more dirt. Good. Okay. Okay, so come on guys, let's get the rest of the the dirt slid in there. See how I'm doing it? Okay, Miles, rake, this rake. Get it all smooth all around it. Good job, boys.
We have Emmett adding fertilizer now, and Stewart's adding some of the good 70-30 enriched soil. Turner's gonna grab some. We're trying to mix in this soil with our current dirt. I think our soil that we have now that's in the field, it's really good. It seems pretty rich, but we wanna add more richness and more nutrients. That's, that's good on the fertilizer. We're gonna fertilize again on top once we have everything uh, smoothed out. Right now the boys are putting layers of the new soil, the current soil together. Now we're gonna mix it together inside the hole, flatten it out, and we're good. Miles, what are you working on here? Some fertilizer um, on the trees. Fer well, fertilizer on the trees? Well, yeah. What kind of fertilizer? Let's take a look. So, organic fruit tree fertilizer contains beneficial soil microbes and microizia. Microizia. Let's go. Make sure you're getting it right on the trunk. Yeah. Around it, I mean. Perfect. Okay. Not yet. Let's wait a minute to get the fertilizer going. Wow, it looks really good, Jason. No, the boys did a good job. You guys surprisingly did a good job. The orchard is awesome. Like. How long did this take you guys to plant? Oh, like an hour. I mean, it was maybe an hour and a half. The wow. hard part was getting the holes dug and everything else. Yeah, that took all day. Yeah. Until you got the right piece of equipment. I always say the right piece of equipment for the job, but my philosophy's changed. Get the biggest piece of equipment you can get for any job. <laughs> biggest Just piece. in case. <laughs> but it worked out fine. And so we have them watered and next time we'll do a whole irrigation system and we'll so how we and we'll that. bark it. So we'll lay down the irrigation right. and the bark and it'll be tidied up. Yes, we saved room for our uh, citrus trees that That's we'll plant. Right. Maybe in two or three weeks as soon as it warms up a little bit more. Yeah, it's just a little cold for them right now. All right, thanks for joining us. Bye, you guys. Bye. -bye.